while back we saw a documentary about Buddhism in Thailand. It was the BBC. And they sent someone over there to look at Buddhism all over the country. And toward the end of the documentary, the, the concluding part had a few glimpses of everything you'd seen during the documentary, including the, the craziness of Bangkok and the quiet atmosphere of a forest monastery. And the narrator presented those as two extremes. The forest monastery was the extreme of deprivation, even though it was a very comfortable forest monastery. And back on, of course, was the extreme of insanity. He said, of course, the Buddha taught about the Middle Way, someplace halfway between the forest monastery and Bangkok. This just goes to illustrate the principle that Ajahn Mahabhava said that for most people the Middle Way is not defined by anything but their own likes and their own sense of what their defilements tell them is just right. He says it's in the middle of the pedal, <coughs> excuse me, the middle of the pillow, in the middle of the, the bed. As so we're thinking about pleasure, pain, in terms of the, the middle way, in terms of the amount. And this is the problem. We tend to run back and forth on this line between extremes of self-indulgence and extremes of self-denial and then someplace in the middle. And never quite sure where the middle is. Keep sliding back and forth. And suddenly you find yourself way off in one direction, and you go running back to the other direction. And you ne never get off this slider here. Because the issue around pleasure and pain is not the amount. It's about your attitude toward it. And for most of us, we're pretty dumb about our pleasure. We don't step back and look at it as part of a larger pattern of cause and effect. In other words, where does the pleasure come from? Where does it lead? The same with pain. Where does the pain come from? Where does it lead? When you look at it in those terms, then you're going to find the true middle way. In other words, that there are some pleasures that are inherently skillful and others that are inherently unskillful. And with the skillful ones, it doesn't matter how much you pursue them, how much you gain. It's all just right. Same with the skillful pains. Unskillful pleasures, unskillful pains, you want to avoid them totally. Now, there are a few areas in the practice where there's, you're on a sliding scale, like you don't want to eat too much, sleep too much. But the really important issues come around where do your pleasures and pains come from? In other words, you've got to step back from them. You've got to be able to look at them and not just jump into the pleasures and gobble them down. This is one of the reasons why we develop the pleasure of concentration. It gives you something to feed on as you look at other pleasures. Focus on your breath. Try to find a breath that's comfortable. Notice what feels just right for the body. And be very strict with yourself about not wandering off other places. When the breath gets comfortable, you have to make sure you don't drift off and get sleepy. This is when you have to find something to keep you actively engaged in the present moment. So you work with the pleasure. You do something with it. This is what evaluation is all about. One, evaluating what kind of breathing feels good. Two, evaluating what way of thinking of the breath helps the breath permeate throughout the body. And then allow that to go all the way around the body. Keep tabs on how things are going in the different parts of the body. So you don't leave the pleasure of the concentration, you just put it to work. That's a skillful pleasure, because it goes to a good place. And it's also based on something good. You're sitting here and you're not harming anybody else. This is something else we have to look for in terms of the pleasures and pains of our lives. There are certain activities that are painful or pleasurable, but they lead to a pleasure that's based on doing something harmful, either to yourself or to other people. 
This is why we have the precepts to remind us that any pleasures that come from the precepts are out of bounds. You may see other people gaining great wealth, honor, fame, whatever, by breaking the precepts, and you have to realize, okay, that's off bounds, out of bounds. No matter how enticing it may be, it's not a place to go, because there's a side to it that's something you don't want to get involved with. And there are certain pains that involve harm to yourself, harm to others too. A lot of times breaking the precepts is painful. If you lie, then you have to worry about who you told the lie to and who you didn't tell the lie to and how you, keep it li how you can keep it going so you don't get found out. And John Lee has a nice discussion of all the trials and tribulations that go into breaking the precepts. So if you find that your pleasures or pains are coming from breaking the precepts, you realize, okay, both of them are off bounds, off the path. And then you look at the pleasures and pains that you have in other areas of your life. In this case, you want to see where they're going. This is a passage where the Buddha said, if you find that by pursuing a particular pleasure, skillful qualities increase in your mind and unskillful ones decrease, that's fine. Go ahead. Pursue that pleasure as much as you want. If you find that it leads to unskillful qualities, okay, then you drop it. You don't go there. You don't pursue it. The same with pains and the same with equanimity. All of these things have to be judged as to what they come from and where they go. The pleasure of concentration is a good place to place to follow, a good pleasure to follow. All too often you hear about the dangers of getting stuck on concentration, but they're very minor compared to the dangers of getting stuck on sensual pleasures. Because the nature of the mind is that it goes around feeding all the time. And if you don't give it something good to feed here inside, it's going to go around and disturb the neighbors. Like a dog you keep in your house. If you don't feed it, it's going to go out and look for food elsewhere. It knows what it's going to find. So learn to appreciate the pleasure that comes from concentration. Work at developing it. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. In that same sutta, the Buddha also points out the fact that there are some causes of stress that require that you simply look at them and they go away. In other words, in terms of the, the effort that goes into it, it doesn't require much effort at all. Other kinds of causes of stress require a lot of effort. You've got to work on the way you breathe, you have to work on the way you think about these things, you have to work on the way you perceive what's going on that gives rise to the that particular defilement. In that case, it's not a matter of doing it just kind of halfway. If whatever is required to get rid of that defilement, you've got to do it. And John Mahabhu's images of a huge pile of excrement here in the middle of the sala. And you can't say, well, we're going to do the middle way and throw just a middling amount of water on it. You've got to throw as much water as it requires to wash the stuff away. Some of our defilements are like that. Others are more refined, more subtle. Sometimes our ignorance is simply a matter of not realizing what we're doing. If you realize, oh, this doesn't make any sense, you can drop it. Other times, part of you knows what you're doing. In that case, the ignorance is going into denial to protect whatever it is you're doing that you know is unskillful, but you want to keep on doing it. Now that kind of ignorance is something that has to require a lot of work. So the principle of the middle way is learning how to step back from your pleasures and pains. Give yourself a place where you can step back, a place where you're getting some sense of nourishment, 
a healthy sense of nourishment, a skillful sense of nourishment. And then you can weigh your pleasures and pains to see whether they're worth pursuing or not. And the ones that are healthy, you just go for them. You don't go for them in moderation, you go for them. The ones that are unskillful, you avoid them. Again, you don't avoid them in moderation. You know, observing the precepts in moderation doesn't mean that you follow them sometimes and break them other times. It means you don't break them, period. This way we avoid just running back and forth on that sliding scale and being dumb about our pleasures. And the Buddha himself was dumb about his pleasures. He ran for total immersion in sensual pleasures when he was young. And as all too often happens when someone realizes that this is not healthy, went running off in the other direction. The middle way came when he realized okay, there are certain pleasures that are actually helpful to the state of your mind, others that are not. That's the distinction, not the amount. The distinction is where they come from and where they go. And it's when you can see your pleasures and pains in that light that you become smart about pleasure smart about pain. You learn to use them as tools.